The God we serve is a God of unity, who desires that his church live in unity and harmony, built on the foundation that is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus who draws us together and the power of the Holy Spirit that make our bond stronger. Churches today have a lot of values. Some churches value doctrine, political correctness, events, programs, social responsibilities, or discipleship. And it's not that these things are not important, but God declares that his kingdom, nothing is, an, is as important as being united in love. God caused the church to be a vibrant and powerful one that bears much fruit, and the way we do that is by working together in perfect unity, not in perfect doctrine, perfect systems, perfect worship services, or perfect leadership. That's why we are likened to a body, because what gets things done is unity and diversity. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 says, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it, it is with Christ. God stands and affirms the power of unity in getting things done. In Genesis 11:6, the Lord spoke of the power and of the people of Babylon, saying, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they purpose to do will now be impossible for them. These people were united for the wrong reasons, and yet God acknowledged what ability they had. Imagine what we can do if we are united for the right reasons. That's why the first thing that God did upon the establishment of the early church was give people a united language. Unity is vital to building strong and vibrant churches. Today, the body of Christ is plagued by church splits and denomination splits, all in the name of truth. But is the truth something that is to bring division within the body of believers? I believe that the truth, once centralized on the person of Jesus Christ, will bring unity and not division. The truth of God's word should bring oneness and not categorization amongst us. The enemy we fight finds no intimidation in church that is fighting with one another. What threatens Satan is a force built on one foundation and brought closer together by the love of God. That's why God calls us to love one another over and over again in the scriptures. He values unity and he values relationships built within parameters of his church. God is looking to build a church where everyone values relation unity. And the way we achieve that unity is being united under one banner. There is no other banner that must be lifted high in God's house than the banner of Jesus' name. The power in being brought together in Jesus' name, and when we are united in Jesus, nothing that we purpose to do will be impossible for us. So food, glad you could be with us today. Thanks for taking time out of our busy schedule to come here. Oh, my pleasure. I knew you would want to talk to me because I'm the most important part of the entire body. Yeah, it's true that feet are an important part of our bodies. That's right. Everyone walks on us. By the end of the day, we are in pain. In fact, we are the most important part in the entire body. Well, I don't know if I'd go quite that far. I mean, every part of the body is so important. Oh, come on. Who needs the appendix? I am the appendix and I'm proud of myself. Really? What do you do? Just sit around and do nothing? I provide immune protection. Well, I'm sure. And the elbows. I am 
am the arms and the elbows. I am strong and I am proud of myself. Ha! You complain a lot when you get hit. You are so irritating. Elbows are also important to the body. Imagine if our arms couldn't bend. We'd all walk like T-Rex with our arms straight up front at us. It'd be pretty hard to pick up little babies and hold them or give anyone a high five. That's true, but still they're overrated. No, us feet, we are the most important part of the entire body. Without us, you won't go anywhere. Just sit in another body part and say that you're stuck in the same place. It's easy to get into the habit of complaining. I'm not complaining, just explaining. We feet get no respect. Other body parts get all the credit. I'm sure you do, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't get me started on the eyes. I am the eyes and you cannot see without me. Everyone is all going and going on about you, staring into you, poets writing about you, saying that you are the windows to the soul. Ha! All that nonsense. Even I've got a soul. I'm sure you do, but... And those eyelashes, flaunting all the time. I like to flaunt, but no. I have to keep everyone standing up all the time. It's a stand-up job and someone has to do it and you do it so well. That's right and don't you forget about the mouth. I'm the mouth. You can't talk without me. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so, he will wash away my sin. Let little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. You're always talking. That's enough. You go sit. It's a big responsibility, talking. It's important to choose our words wisely, to think before we talk, to not use our words to harm others, to use our words to brag, but to w encourage one another. Hey, are you talking about me? If the shoe fits. Well, I don't know if I, if I don't talk about myself, who will? God will, he already has. He has? Really? Where? What did he say? He said, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Wow, he said about me? He did in the Bible in Isaiah 52, 7. And then in the rest of that verse, he said, who proclaim peace, who brings good tidings, who proclaim salvation, and say to Zion, your God reigns. Can I proclaim peace too? Well, you do wear the shoes of peace. Wow, I had no idea. I don't know what to say. Really? That must be a first. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it makes a difference, doesn't it? Knowing who you are on the body of Christ? It does. I mean, I don't really care about any other stuff anymore. We are all important. We work together. Wow. Wow, is right. He, God Almighty, really about talked about the beautiful feet? He thinks I'm beautiful? He does. He knows you're better than anyone. He made you for a special purpose. And he made you to work with other parts of the body, all of you, together in unity. I never thought about it like any before. I'm not going to be jealous of all these guys, but I'm going to work hard to bring peace with them. And good news, we've got a lot to do. I better get going. It's good that I know how to move. In fact, I feel like dancing. Yeah, knowing the Father will do that for you. Take care. Peace be with you. Thanks, Food. May all your steps be directed by Him who created you. May they be for His purpose. May you take those steps with joy and may you dance often. May we all find such joy in the Lord as we work together in unity. Many different people but unified in Christ. First Corinthians 12, 12.